Hello everyone, my name is Vinuta. Welcome back to the digital design classes. So, in the previous lectures, we have seen how different uh, digital logics are there like positive uh, logic, negative logic and uh, how different gates, uh, what are the different gates which are uh, uh, <coughs> designed into ICs and what are their uh, uh, symbols and what are their truth tables, these all things we have seen in detail. And also we have seen a method of simplification that if the Boolean uh, uh, function, if the Boolean function is given, how to simplify it? Because we know that when we have a Boolean function, the Boolean function is finally realized into a digital circuit. If we have a simplified version, when we have a simplified version which is equivalent to the given Boolean uh, function, which performs the same. That means, uh, for the given input sequence, it produces the same output as the complex function. But when we realize the simplified version of the uh, Boolean function, we need minimum number of gates with minimum number of inputs to it. So, that is the main reason behind simplifying the Boolean equation. So, we have seen uh, one or two examples in the uh, previous lecture. Now, I give you some exercises to work on it. So, here uh, two functions are defined, one is in terms of SOP, another one is in terms of POS. I want you to using the theorems and laws of Boolean algebra, what we have learned in the previous lectures, I want you to simplify these and then write the Boolean function in the simplified version. <coughs> now, in today's lecture, what we are going to see? There are other methods where you can simplify the given Boolean expression that is using Carnot method. This Carnot uh, simplification method is very much authentic and is very easy to simplify when we have more than few inputs, uh, input variables. To understand the k-map <coughs> for Boolean functions with 2, 3 or 4 variables. So, how when we have a uh, function, Boolean function with 2 input variables or 3 input variables, 4 input variables, how to draw the k-map and using k-map, how to simplify the Boolean expression, that is what we are going to see in today's lecture. And now, what are the prime implicants and how to identify the prime implicants using k-map, that is what I uh, will be covering in today's class. Now, let us start with the class. Now, let us look at the another method of uh, Boolean expression simplification that is using k-map. In short, we call it as k-map, but it is also called as Karnoff map. So, what do we do in this? Okay. Let us start with a two variable k-map. When we have two variables, the uh, what we have seen, uh, we can represent that using the truth table. Now, this k-map is nothing but another version of representation of the same truth table in different method. Here, rather than using rows and columns, we use a grid method, where each uh, square, okay, in the grid, each square represents one main term. So, let us try and understand that using two variable k map. As I said, we are, the k map is drawn using the grids the grid would look like this. Now, here this grid we are going to represent using two variable k map. So, now all the rows are representing one variable and all the columns representing another variable. We already know that whenever we have uh, even in the truth table or uh, whenever we are constructing the min terms, we know that where the given variables can be present in any form that is either uh, in a <coughs> complemented form or non complemented form so here also every min uh, every uh, square in the Carnot map is representing one min term so now this this represents one variable let me tell it uh, call it as x dash x the one variable presents in two forms, complemented form, non-complemented form. So, here this row represents the complemented form and this row represents the non-complemented form. Similarly, we have this for y dash y. 
So, this row represents x and y. So, this is in general we draw the k map for. Now, if you look at ok, if you look at this, this particular square belongs to the mean term called x dash y dash ok. So, the mean term uh, present in this square is x dash y dash. Similarly, now I think you can tell me what is the mean term for this square is x dash y. For this square it belongs to x and it belongs to y dash. So, this particular square in the grid k map belongs to x y dash. Now, this belongs to x y. Now, the same thing let me draw the truth table for your convenience. So, it is x y 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 and the mean term is going to be x dash y dash this is called as m 0 and this is x dash y m 1 x y dash m 2 x y m 3. So, this we have already seen. Now, I just want to relate, want you to relate this truth table to the Carnot map. Now, if the same thing, if I redraw it again, it would look like something this x dash x y dash y and now uh, y dash x dash y dash nothing but m 0. This particular square is for min term 0 and this is for min term 1 m 2 and this is for m 3. Now, once we have this grid, how it is going to help us to simplify the given Boolean expression? Okay. Let us see uh, with an example. Now, consider we have, I hope you underst understood this. Now, in this, whatever we are going to represent is, which mean term is going to give, uh, produce high output, one output, those squares we are going to represent as one. The, the which mean terms are producing 0 output, those output, uh, those squares are represented with 0 value. Okay. Let us see this with an example. Now, consider we have a function ok, function of x comma y that means function which takes only two variables which is represented in the SOP form by <coughs> 1, 2, 3. Now, how to realize this or how to minimize this, how to simplify this using k, k map method let us look at it. Now, if I have to uh, write the truth table for this particular uh, Boolean function, it is going to be 0 is not there. So, it is 0. Here, whatever the terms mentioned in the uh, <coughs> SOP format, so those terms, those mean terms are producing high output, one output. So, only m1, m2 and m3 are producing high output, all the remaining other combinations are producing 0 output. So, this is how your truth table looks like. Now, how to construct a k map out of it and how to, uh, I have a space here, let me draw it here, x, y and whenever we are drawing any k map, this is going to be our basic structure. So, this is how we are going to represent all the rows and columns. Now, what does it says? Min term 1, 2, 3 are high and min term 0 is going to be 0. So, which square belongs to min term 0? This one. Okay. So, let me write these min term uh, indexes in the corner. Okay. So, now which are producing high output? 1, min term 1. So, I am putting 1 in that particular square, then 2 put 1 in that square, then 3 put 1 in the square which belongs to min term 3. Now, whatever the remaining squares, we are just going to mark them as 0. Now, we got the 
K map for the given equation. Yes, so I hope the drawing of K map is very simple. Yes, you need to understand the <coughs> basics of it. Each row belongs to one particular form of a one variable. That is, x. If it belongs, if this or both the rows belongs to x, one row belongs to x dash. Okay, one row belongs to x. If columns belongs to one variable, then one column points to one form of variable. Another column points to another form of variable. Now the, next, now the next step is when for any given Boolean equation, we have to identify which are the min terms producing the high output. Then the uh, squares which belongs to that particular min term, we are going to mark them as 1. Other min terms, the, the remaining min terms, we are going to directly mark them as 0. Now starts the next step. Once we have uh, drawn the K map. Now, one, after that we have to fill the uh, uh, appropriate values in each square of the K map. Next part comes to the simplification. To simplify the Carnot map, what do we do is, we identify the adjacent ones. Okay? Now, if you observe this, this one is adjacent to this and this one is adjacent to this. When we are looking at adjacent, the uh, ones can be adjacent in a uh, horizontal uh, blocks or the ones may also be adjacent in the vertical blocks. So, in this case these two are adjacent and these two are adjacent. We should not look at the adjacent in a diagonal way. We are not looking at this. We just have to look at either vertical or horizontal adjacency. Okay. Now, let us see the interesting part is when we get the adjacent, what do we do? we mark them as pair. Now, what happens here is we get one pair, we mark them as one pair. So, the basic idea behind this Carnot map is identifying the adjacent ones. So, in this case, we hardly get only pairs, there are another form of grouping of ones. Okay. But uh, as an example, when we are taking an example of two variable k map, we will get only pairs, maximum we get pairs. Then this is one group, this is one group. Now let us see, when, when I grouped, what exactly is happening in that case? Now what is the min term of this? Okay? What is the min term for this? It is x dash y. Okay? Let me write, I am just talking about this grouping. So one. Uh, one block in this group is belongs to x dash y and another block in this group belongs to plus x y. I hope you got an idea. I am just talking about this particular pair, this particular pair which we have already marked as one group. Then now, now what happens? Is there any common factors? which I can take out and then simplify this, yes. So, this y is a common factor, I am taking y, then x dash plus x and according to the definition of uh, item potent theorem, what, what does this says? Uh, sorry, it is a complement theorem, x dash plus x is always equal to 1. So, this will becomes y into 1 equal to y. So now, just by looking at this, I can tell that this particular group, okay, this particular group, the term will be y. How can I say that? So if you just look at this, okay, this uh, the uh, this group, particular group, there are one variable which is changing it its form. Okay, in this group, your x is changing its form uh, from x dash to x. In that case, what happens is this particular variable we have to eliminate in the term. Okay? So, the basic term will be along with y because in this particular column, the value of the next variable is in the form of uncomplemented form that is y. Okay? So, now when I combine more than one ones, then I have to look at the adjacent uh, 
uh, values, the adjacent variable forms. If any of the variable is changing its form from complement to uncomplement or uncomplement to complement, then we have to eliminate that from the term. Okay. So now for this group, the term is going to be only y. Now I have there will be another one term which is coming for this group. Okay. Now can you just guess what is the next term? In this, is the x changing its form? No x is constant, it is in the form of uncomplemented form x, yes. But when I look at this group, okay, which one, uh, one part of this group belongs to y dash, another part belongs to y, that means your y is changing its form from uh, complemented form to uncomplemented form. So in this case, what happens is we have to eliminate this particular variable from the Term. So, what remains here is only the x. So, the simplified version of this is nothing but y plus x or even according to the uh, uh, commutative law, you can see it as x plus y. Now, observe the truth table. Is not it your OR gate truth table? Yes. So, I hope you understood. So, what do we do using KMAP is first we need to identify all the min terms which are producing high output. Then we are going to mark the appropriate squares which belongs to that particular min term as 1 and the remaining min terms which are not mentioned in the equation, Boolean equation, we are going to mark them as 0. Now we need to identify, we need to group the ones, adjacent ones. The adjacent ones can be in a uh, vertical in a column in a particular column the, or the adjacent ones may be in a particular row. When we are grouping adjacent ones, okay, we have seen with an example okay, what happens with this, what happens with this and uh, yes there is one more thing which I have to discuss, I will come back to that because it is an overlap here, okay, do not worry I will discuss that. But when I group this then what happens here, we get this but again but this again can be simplified, yes. So why are we using this KMAP is the final version of whatever the uh, output we are getting out of KMAP is going to be the simplified version. We again need not do it manually. So that is why to get that we have to group the ones, adjacent ones. So when I do the adjacent ones vertically, then the value which is in that column will remain constant and the value which is changing in the rows that I have to understand which value is changing its form from complement to uncomplement, uncomplement to complement that I have to eliminate. For this group I am getting the variable as y and for this group I am getting this y dash y is getting cancelled then we are getting only the variable x. So that is going to be the final output. So that means the equation whatever the given function or what I have written x comma y 1 2 3 that belongs to the equation x plus y or y plus x. I hope you got it. Again if you observe there is an overlap. Okay. So always whenever we are trying to find the group we always have to find the maximum possible group. Now see whenever we are doing the Boolean equation simplification. What is our major motto? One is minimize the number of terms, yes, minimize the number of terms and also minimize the number of literals in each term, okay. So in each term, this is one term, this is one term, okay. I like this, I can have m multiple terms. So what is my motto? Minimize the number of terms. If I have 10, if I can reduce it to 2 or 3, that is what I have to do. Then if this term is containing 3 variables, if I can reduce it, I can make it with only 2 variables, that is what I have to do. That is what the whole uh, minimization or the simplification of Boolean equation uh, is all about. So now, if I just group this only 1, okay, forget about this grouping, if I just group this 1, okay, because I, I think that. Um, I do not want to overlap, so I just group this one, there is no um, what partner for this. 
So, I am just if I keep this 1 then this is made up of 2 variables x and y dash because this particular belongs to x y dash min term. So, it will become x y dash. So, again if you just look at this, this is nothing but 2 terms uh, in this term we are having 2 literals ok. So, but if I group them together even though there is a overlap if I group them together I get a variable with only I get a term with only one variable ok that is what is expected. So, that is why what we have to do even whether the overlap or not what we have to do we have to always try to find the maximum number in grouping and there are few more rules when grouping. So, can I group 3 variables like this? No, the grouping always have to be in power of 2. I can group 2 way, two ones, I can group 4 ones, I can group 8 ones, can I group 6? No, because 6 is not a power of 2. So, that is why I cannot group 6 variables. Yes, you might be getting confused now because there are no 6 min terms but that will apply when we are looking at 3 variable k map or 4 variable k map ok. So, the <coughs> I hope you understood this the k map very simple method which gives the simplified version of any given equation. So, the equation may be written in this SOP format ok sum of product format or the equation might be given in product of sum format or the equation might be given in non canonical format ok. But initially we will look, uh, look for the examples where the equations are written in SOP format. So, the grouping actually grouping of ones ok allow us to eliminate the eliminate a particular um, literal in that particular term whichever is changing its form from complement to uncomplement that variable we can directly eliminate. Why? Because we have seen the simple example when we take 2 min terms and if there is a common term if there is a common term which we simplify it manually uh, we will be getting only one term uh, one literal with that one term ok. So, that is what we have to do. This is all about two variable k map. When we have two variable how many squares will be there in the k map? The number of rows which are equivalent in your truth table in, a, in our truth table for two variables will be having 4 rows similarly will be having 4 squares in the k map. Now, let us look at the 3 variable k map. In 3 variable k map we have seen the truth table is going to contain 8 rows that is starting from 0 to 7 then we will be having min terms from m 0 to m 7. Now, it is not as simple as two variable k map. What is the difference? We will see. Yes, when we have this 3 variable k map as I said we will be having 8 min terms. So, I need 8 squares in my uh, k map. Simil the same thing can be written vertically or horizontally. In all my examples I am taking horizontal k map. So, in one side I am going to take one variable, in another side I am going to take two variables y and z. Now, with one variable there are only two possibilities, two different forms x dash and x. So, one row is going to represent x dash, another row is going to represent x. With two variables there are four possibilities that is y dash, z dash, then y dash, z, 
then y z, z dash then y z. So, these all four min terms are um, identified by each column of this k map. Now, let us start writing this. If this is y dash z dash, then this will be y dash z. Okay. So, now I cannot write here what uh, if I write the two table, it is going to be y dash z dash, y dash z, y z dash, then y z, which belongs to 0, 0, 0, 1, um, 1, 0, 1, 1. These min terms belongs to these particular variables for two inputs. So, now I can I write here y z dash. So, first answer is no, I cannot write here y z dash. That is because the k map rule, while writing the k map, it says that every adjacent row or a column must differ in only one variable. What does that mean? If I just look at this, y dash is constant. What is changing its form? Only one variable is changing its form from complement to uncomplement. But here, if I look at this, so, y dash is changing to y, z is changing to z dash. That means, two variables are changing its form. That is not allowed. So, all the adjacent rows and columns must change for only one variable. So, then what I can do? If I write y, z, okay. Now, y dash is changing its form, z is as it is constant. So, that is what we need to write. Now, whatever is remaining y z dash. Now, here also if you look at here y is constant, z is changing its form that is allowed. Now, what, what happens to the min term? This belongs to x dash, y dash, z dash. That is nothing but min term 0. This belongs to x dash, y dash, z that belongs to main term 1 that is x dash y z this belongs to main term 3 yes x dash y z dash this belongs to main term 2 yes. So, this column while writing the k map this thing you have to keep in your mind this is a very important step. If you do the interchange, if you write here y z dash and y z here, the entire simplification may go wrong. Then this belongs to x y dash z dash that is 4, x y dash z 5, x y z 7, x y z dash 6. Okay. So, the min term distribution of this is like this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yes. So, this is because we have seen in the previous example that when we group the adjacent ones, when we group the adjacent ones, what happens? The adjacent uh, ones may be either in vertical column or in the horizontal row. If the horizontal row or vertical column is not changing only with a one variable, then I cannot cancel them. If they are changing in two variables, I cannot directly cancel them. So, that is the reason when we are writing the k map, all the adjacent columns or adjacent rows must differ in only one variable. That means, only one variable can change its forms in adjacent rows or columns. So, that is the reason we do not get them in sequence. All the min terms are not represented in a sequence. It is 1, 2, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and then 7. Yes. So, now let us look at one of the example. f 1 equal to three point 
3, 5, 7. <coughs> now, oh, yes, let me even include 2 here, 2, 3, 5, 7. Okay. So, now it is very simple how to fill the K map is very simple. Whenever this SOP is given, all these terms whatever is mentioned is min terms. I just have to identify the block or the square which belongs to min term 2, I have to put 1 there. So, min term 2 which belongs to this, min term 3 is this square, min term 5 is here and then min term 7 is here. Yes, very simple. After that what I have to do? The remaining squares have to be filled with zeros. Once I have this, I have a K map which is equivalent to this particular given expression. Now, how to simplify this? Again the same method I have to use. Yes. So, whenever we are getting any simplified method using the K map or using the manual method, you there is a possibility that we may get uh, different uh, simplified versions. Okay. So, whatever the simplified version it is, all are uh, valid. There is a chance that all are valid uh, simplified versions. So, now let us look at one of them is if we observe here again, see uh, here uh, can we group 4 ones? No, right. So, maximum possible is again here pair. So, this is one pair and then this is another pair, yes. Is there any other grouping possible here? Do we have any other ones? No. So, then uh, can I group these two? So, when I need to stop grouping, there is another thing. Of course, if you look at this, these are two adjacent, yes, but these ones are already covered in one group. So, I need not create another group for these two, that is not necessary. The main motto here is to identify or to put ones at least in one group, okay. And to simplify more, if I just, if I can overlap and simplify more, then overlap, overlapping is allowed. But here, if I overlap and then group these two is a wrong thing. Why wrong thing? Because unnecessarily I will get, when the entire equation can be covered with only two terms, I will be covering with three terms, right. So, as I discussed earlier, when we have a Boolean equation, what is the simplification means is I have to simplify the number of terms and I also have to simplify the number of literals in each term, right. So, if I just group them, I will be adding another term which is definitely not at all necessary. So, that is why I am not going to group them. Now, I need to identify the term which belongs to this particular group and the term which belongs to this particular group. Now, let us look at, okay. So, in this x dash is constant, in this entire row x dash is constant and then y is also constant, which is the variable which is changing its form that is z is changing from z to z dash. Then what I have to eliminate? z I have to eliminate. What I get here? x dash is constant, y is constant. So, the term is going to be x dash z, x dash y because z is eliminated because it is changing its form from adjacent. Now, if I look at this term, okay, in this x is constant, yes, which is among y z which is the changing form, y is changing its form from y dash to y, z is constant. So, what is the term which belongs to this? That is x z. So, the term which belongs to this is x z and the term which belongs to this is x dash y. Finally, what we have to do? Whenever we have multiple groups, we just have to identify the term which belongs to that particular group and then we have to or them together. That will be our final simplified version of the given a Boolean expression. So, it is going to be, I have already written this term, then I have to write this x z, this is now going to be the simplified version of given function f 1, which is given in the form of SOP. 
I hope this is clear to you guys. Now, when we are grouping, there are multiple conditions we need to keep in our mind. Okay. Let us look at another example. x, y, z, x dash, x, y dash, z dash, y dash, z, y, z, y, z dash. This belong to me in term 0, 1, 2, 3, then 4, 5, 6, 7. This is very important step you need to remember because 2 and 6 going to come in the last column and 3 and 7 are going to come in the second last column why we have already discussed. Now, let us look at the function f 2 which belongs to 2, 3, 6, 7, 2, 3 let me add another variable 5, 6, 7. Okay. So, now what, what is the first step? Draw the k map uh, like label all the rows and columns and then put ones in the given min terms, 2 is 1, 3, then we have 5, then we have 6, then 7. The remaining squares we have to fill with zeros. Now, if I look at this, okay, how many pairs I will get? To simplify this, there are multiple methods. I can get I can pair up like this, like this or I can pair up like this, like this and like this. Yes, because till now we have seen only pair, but I also said something that is if you can group the maximum number of ones and the ones can, uh, can only be grouped in, uh, in the number of 2, uh, the power of 2, yes. So, can I group this 4? Can you see this? These 4 variables are adjacent to each other. Yes? So, then what is the maximum? Is a pair or quad? We call this group of 4 ones as quad. Obviously, quad is more bigger. Then what we have to do is we have to group this quad. Yes? Now, is there any ones remaining? Yes, we do have here. 1, what is, what is the biggest uh, uh, combination possible with this 1? That is, I can group it as 1, yes, but, but bigger than that is also possible, that is this group, yes. Uh, as we have discussed already, even though it is overlapping, yes. When we cannot overlap is uh, the basic thing is I need to make sure all the ones are covered in at least one group. If uh, I am overlapping to cover the ones which are already covered in some different groups is not a right thing. That is what I have told in the previous example. Now, we have two groups. One is quad, another one is pair. What is the next step? We just have to identify the term which belongs to this and which belongs to this pair. So, what is the term for this? Okay. So, whenever we have a pair, yes, for three term variable, whenever we have a pair, only one variable will be eliminated because in a pair, only one variable will be changing its form, yes, but when it is a quad, okay, there will be possibility of elimination of two variables because two variables will be changing its form in quad, yes. So, I am minimizing the number of literals in one term by getting by uh, like grouping the quad together. Now, what is the term for this in this, okay, in this entire thing? What is it uh, if I look at column wise, what is the variable which is changing its form? 
z is changing from z to z dash. So, z is eliminated. What is left over is y and if I look at these two rows, x is changing its form. So, x is also eliminated. So, what is the variable left is only y. Okay. For this quad, so that is the beauty of it. When we have a quad, yes, two variables are eliminated because it is uh, three input uh, equation. So, if I eliminate two, then only one variable will remain in its form, whether it can be complemented or uncomplemented form. Now, again, I have to identify the term for this particular pair. So, what is the term? In this x is constant, in this z is constant, y is changing its form. So, y is eliminated. So, what remains is x z plus x z. So, this will be the simplified form of f 2, which is represented as 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, which is equivalent to y plus x z. So, this is how we are going to simplify the given k map, like whatever the uh, min terms are given in SOP form, the, those min terms are identified as 1 and marked as 1 in a particular given k map um, uh, skeleton and the remaining are marked as 0. Now, the next term is the grouping of 1s. You can group 1s as a single 1, okay. wherever if, if, uh, if I have 1 which cannot be paired with any of the adjacent, then I can keep it as 1. I, I can keep it as single 1. You can pair it in the form of pair, like two ones can be paired together and then you can also pair four ones. We call it as quad. When we group more number of ones into one group, that will get minimum number of literals in that term. Okay? If you observe this quad, we have only one literal in this term. Pair, we have two literals in this pair. If I have only one, this single one, what, what would I have got? X, Y dash, Z. I am getting three literals in that. Okay? The, that is why the maximum number of grouping, uh, the minimum number of terms in, one, uh, minimum number of literals in one term. So, that is the reason we have to always identify the maximum number of groupings, whichever is possible. Now, let us look at another example. we have f 3 which is equal to <coughs> 0 1 2 4 6. Okay. So, it is a very simple thing 0 is high because it is a min term which is represented there 1 is high then we have 2, then we have 4 and then we have 6. Yes. Now, tell me what is the maximum grouping possible? The remaining do not forget to put down as 0. Now, what is the maximum grouping possible in this? Yes. It is obvious where we are getting uh, pairs 1, 2, 3, right? No. That is the trick here. So, even though these two edges does not look adjacent to each other, but if you look closely, they are adjacent to each other. When we are calling two columns are adjacent to each other, when these variables will differ in only one variable, okay. that is y is constant in this, z is changing its form. Here, z is constant in this, y is changing its form. In this, y dash is constant, z is changing its form. Now, if you look at these two columns, y z dash, y dash, z dash. So, y is changing its form, z dash is constant. Yes, it is like 
we are rolling we are rolling the game up if we connect these two edges together they come together and even they are adjacent because they are differing in only one term okay uh, one term being changing its form from um, complement to uncomplement so when they are adjacent what is the maximum group i can form here yes it's quad it's like these two are getting combined with these two okay so when we are representing we we just keep this as open end as if it is connecting to these two open end okay so these two together with these two are forming quad now yes now what is left what is left this one is left now i have to combine them with the adjacent ones i get only one pair now again i have to identify the terms for this quad and this pair then i have to or them together to get the simplified equation so what is it what is the term for this let us identify because it is uh, spanning across the uh, both the rows then definitely x is eliminated because x is changing its form from one to another in these two rows so x is eliminated and now i have to look at these two terms so in this y dash y that means y is changing its form what is constant z dash yes so the term which belongs to this is only z dash now i also have to identify the term which belongs to this pair that is x dash is constant okay then what else is changing z is changing its form so y dash will remain constant so another term is x dash y dash yes so once we grouped once we identified the term which belongs to that particular group what is the next step next step is to write the equation it's going to be x dash y dash plus z dash how many ever terms we are getting those many terms we have to put it uh, we have to combine them using or operation okay i hope this is clear this is an example of rolling the k map we call it as rolling the k map okay you can roll the k map either horizontally or vertically in this case uh, rolling of vertical k map is not necessary because anyway these two are adjacent but when we are looking at the four variable k map even you can roll the k map vertically okay so i hope you got this how to identify even uh, to group your maximum number of ones you can roll your k map you have to check the edges of the k map if it is possible that i get uh, rather than pair if i get a quad it is always better to group into quad if it is possible like more than quad we get the octet now let us look at an example of the octet i hope this is clear to you guys typical example 01234567 yes we have eight min terms which are all possible min terms are given in this yes now what happens 01234567 can you guess how many ones i can group together to get the maximum number of ones yes you are right i can group all of them together this grouping of eight ones eight adjacent ones we call it as quad okay now we have grouped all these ones into a quad now let us look at what happens to the term 
what term we are going to get for this quad. If you observe x is changing its form because it has spread across multiple rows. Then if you look at this okay, y is changing its form and if you look at this your z is changing its form then what remains? No variables. So, what does that mean? It is a constant equation which is always 1 irrespective of the values of the variable which is always produces the 1 output. Okay. So, maybe like uh, for this example I have taken this example just to show you how to group your 1s into octet. I hope uh, using this 2 and 3 variable k map, we have learned how to draw the k map. What do you mean by k map? K map is nothing but uh, another representation, another way to represent your truth table. Again, we are going to use the min terms. E square in the k map represents a min term, and then each uh, <coughs> whenever the Boolean equation is given, we are going to uh, express that Boolean e expression in terms of mean terms that is sum of mean terms. Then uh, once we have that sum of mean terms then we are going to mark all the squares in the k map with zeros and 1s. The next step is identify or group the adjacent 1s. Uh, here when we are grouping we have to take care the adjacents, uh, the adjacents uh, ones can be uh, across the uh, columns or across the rows and even we can see that the edges of the k map are also connected together by rolling method. When we are grouping you have to even take care of that rolling. Then uh, once we have grouped all the ones whichever maximum possible we are going to group them. We have to uh, group all the ones then what we have to do we have to identify the term which belongs to each group. Then once we have uh, all the terms which belongs to every group which we have marked on the k map then we have to or all the terms together to get the simplified boolean expression. Okay. Now uh, let me take the simple example of uh, k map where the grouping is not possible. Zero, one. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, x, y, z, x dash, y dash, uh, x dash, x, y dash, z dash, y dash, z, y, z, y, z dash. Now consider we have an equation f4 equal to 3 comma 5, the summation of 3 comma 5 we have 1 here, we have 1 here. Then can we group them together? As I already told we are not looking at the uh, adjacent like diagonally adjacent, we have to be vertically adjacent or horizontally adjacent. I cannot group them this way. So when there is no adjacent ones to group in maximum then what we have to do? We have to keep them as a single terms. Again, what are the uh, what are the term for this? Is nothing but a x dash y z. The term for this is x y dash z. Okay. So if you observe, when when we have a single variable, we are getting the term with three inputs. When we have a pair, for example, when we have this pair x is there, z is eliminated. So, we are getting x dash y. We are getting when, when there is a pair, we are getting the term with two variables. When we have a, a quadral, okay, quadral, then we, we are getting only one term. Two uh, literals are changing its form, we are getting only term with one variable. I hope this is clear to you guys. 
thanks for listening to this uh, uh, video and then we have one uh, equation okay, which is not written in the form of SOP okay, which is not written in the standard canonical format. Then how to solve this using KMAP? First thing we need to convert that into a standard format then we have to draw the KMAP then we have to simplify that we are going to look into in the next class. Thank you.